John, I have had the uh, pleasure of working with the Velocity Series way, 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 way back when to the original uh, Orange Monstrosity and so forth and so on back in the days with uh, Danny and the gang. Uh, I have been thrilled to watch these aircraft progress and mature and do so well over the years. And I'm dying to hear how the twin is holding up, in, in uh, both from the standpoint of what it went through from testing and now that it's out in the field. Uh, so far, we're uh, pretty happy with the results of it. Um, we've done some minor changes with the production ones. Uh, the main gear, just for ground CG handling, it's going to come back about three inches because we're putting larger engines on the next one. This one has 160 horse, so we're going to 180 horse. As a result of that, we go to another propeller that's about another 10 pounds each. Flight CG, we're not worried about it because the shift isn't very big, but this one on the ground is about 42 pounds empty for the prototype, so we're trying to get them around 80, 85 pounds, which is normal for our single engines. So we're hoping to see better single engine climb performance. Top end, it should be 10, 15 knots faster. The infamous question about winglets, that will have winglets on them. The wing will be about a foot shorter than what our current one has, and that also gives us the ability to hide the, um, the landing lights and the nav lights internally. So it, just little changes here and there. What have you learned from this airplane from a standpoint of overall operation and handling? Uh, so far it's been a joy to fly. Um, endurance wise we're getting uh, at 170 knots true. We're getting uh, about 12 gallons an hour burn. If we go up a little higher we're actually a little less. Uh, if we're running 180 true on the way out here from Florida we ended up burning uh, about uh, 13 gallons an hour. Non-stop from Florida, it was about an 1100 nautical mile route and we still had about a two hour reserve landing. Well, obviously the minute you approach any kind of twin project, the ultimate question is, how's it handle on one engine? The airplane has no VMC because of the canard up front. Our stall speed's about 84 knots with it. The nose is just going to pitch buck. If you feather an engine, it just goes straight ahead like our single engine pitch buck. It feels like you're sitting in a rocking chair. If one is windmilling out there, it will still pitch buck, but it will start. It's not going to roll, but it's going to slide the nose towards the um, dead engine a little bit because that thrust of the engine, every time the nose comes down, it's going to kick it over. So, but other than that, it's uh, you can trim it hands off single engine. Um, it'll climb the 8,000 density altitude, and we can maintain over 12.5 with it. Renbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Renbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. For those of us with experience in uh, a number of the previous Velocity aircraft, how's the overall handling compare? Handling is very similar. The biggest difference most people will notice is we went back to a traditional tail. Most of that was because our single engine is just a drag producer out there, so you'll run out of leverage eventually. So with the center tail, most people's response to have flown it, that have flown our other one, is that you get immediate rudder effectiveness because of the size of the rudder, and it's going to respond like a normal rudder. You don't have that spoiler effect that what our normal winglets do. Landing characteristic wise, it's going to land like a light twin. Uh, again, the rudder is the same as a traditional airplane of wherever you put the rudder, it's going to act you know, normal. Before you had to use varying pressure on the winglets. Run me through a basic flight profile. Take off and departure, climb, cruise, descent and landing. What do the numbers and the procedures look like? Takeoff roll at gross is going to be about 1500 feet. Our rotation speed is 82 knots since 84 is our stall. Climb out initial is going to be 104, and then once the gear comes up, we usually use, run a cruise climb around 120 knots, and that's going to give us around 14 to 1600 feet a minute, climb up to 10,000. Leveling off, we're typically pulling back. Manifold pressure up there is about 20, 21 inches. We run 2,500 on the props with the 320s because it runs nice and smooth, and we're usually leveling out. Lean a peak cruise, pulling back to about 12 gallons an hour, getting about 168 to 170 and then rich a peak, we're burning about 13 to 14 at 180. So, so far we've been happy with that, starting off with a pretty bulletproof engine, and then we're going to 360s. Some guys will still use the 320s, but 360s are kind of our take from here on out. With the experimentals across the board, as soon as you put a little horsepower on it, everybody wants more. So that was taken into consideration during the design. We ended up making the engine nacelles and the mounts to accept larger engines and the tail to take more. 
as far as offset thrust. The descent with the airplane, it's a normal descent profile, just planned out either 500 feet a minute or 1,000 feet a minute. Typical pattern speeds are going to be around 100, 110 in the pattern. Final is going to be between 90 and 100, depending on how you're loaded. Touchdown around 85. Single engine go arounds, our climb rate at gross is about 350 feet a minute. So not uh, as good as with two going, but better than uh, not climbing at all. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now www.sportplane.com. So the twins are only offered in a fast build. Uh, kit starting price is 110,000. That is uh, everything um, to complete the airframe. The only things that aren't included are going to be your engine props and avionics. Fully done, you're starting out the door price. You're going to be somewhere around 220,000, and then going up from there, the average will probably be around 250, 275. Sky's the limit when it comes to avionics. Engine prices will go up as you change that. The idea was to keep it as economical to operate and also to build. Price-wise, it's very similar to what our single engine is. Well, John, we appreciate your time and a chance to catch up with you. We look forward to getting down uh, to Sebastian and flying. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much.